I'm Kira Vincent Davis, and I'm playing Quan. My name is Monica Rial, and I'm playing Haruka Shito in Razafan. I'm Chris Patton, and I play Ayato Kamina in Razafan. My character, Kwan, is um, a mysterious girl who is outside of Tokyo Jupiter, whom the central character Ayato meets when he's bust out of Tokyo Jupiter. And um, she speaks in riddles, and they're, all her riddles mean something. Uh, they're cryptic, apocalyptic um, predictions. Haruka is this 29-year-old butt-kicking chick. She's totally different than anything I've ever played before. She um, pines for a young boy who, well, I guess I can't give that away because I'd be giving too much away. You're going to have to figure it out along the way. But she has some very strong feelings for Ayato that kind of come through that you see throughout the show. But she's just She's so cool. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe her. She's just really cool and laid back, and she's got a great sense of humor. My character is a high school student, and um, is, he's a really normal 17-year-old kid, basically. And um, he's a really normal 17-year-old kid who wakes up one day and finds himself in the middle of uh, a big mess. <laughs> so. Um, He's not so much complicated as the situation that he gets into is. Well, I might be a little bit biased, but I think that she's the most interesting character in the entire series. Um, there's a lot of things we don't know about her, and is where is she from? Um, who is she? What? are all these things that she's saying, what do they mean? Um, what I've enjoyed most about Haruka is that she's been so completely different than anything I've done in the past. Everything I've done in the past was, you know, 12-year-old girls and la, 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 which is great. There's nothing, nothing wrong with any of that. But at the same time, it's so cool to finally play a character that's close to my actual age. And she just has this outgoing and kind of bombastic personality. Whereas, you know, most of my characters have been kind of quiet and timid. So I've been really enjoying getting to kind of play that whole side of things. I like the fact that um, my character and this show in general has a lot of, um, I guess because he's simple and he's real, he has a lot of emotional depth and range. And uh, most of the characters are the same way. So I've been able to use that with my voice and the voices I've been playing off of. So playing with his whole wide range of emotions uh, through the struggles he has to go through has been my favorite part. Well, there's really nothing that I really don't enjoy about the character except perhaps maybe I think she should have a little more screen time. What have I enjoyed the least? Uh, working with Chris Patton? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, actually, <laughs> what I've enjoyed the least, I really enjoyed it so much. Probably the most difficult thing, I would say, when we were working on volume one, um, trying to get the foley, the sounds that Haruka would make when she punches or she kicks. and. I've been doing all these really uh, high-pitched characters for such a long time that I'm used to, ee, ah, 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 and all of a sudden I've got this girl that's like beating people up, and she's got to have these hardcore, Rah! and it was really hard at first to get this to sound really natural. Matt did a lot of this at me for a while. Well, along those same lines, um, I've enjoyed the freaking out the least, uh, just because anytime you have to do anything where there's screaming bloody murder or uh, you know, there's a couple of instances just in the first volume where he realizes um, things are not as they seem and he uh, he freaks out and that in this case requires a screaming at the top of my lungs over and over again sometimes to get the sound just right and um, that's that's not too enjoyable
Well, with most characters that I've played, I'm, us I'm able to find some sort of similarities. One of the first things I do uh, when I'm given the synopsis of what um, of who my character is when I come in to play a, to play a character um, is to find similarities between myself and this character. And while there are obvious differences between Quan and myself, I think that there are some um, some similarities. Um, I think that Quan is a bit misunderstood and um, there's a lot there's a lot of depth to her that um, you might not see on her limited screen time, but <laughs> there is a lot of depth. And everything, everything she says is, means something very important, something very pivotal to what's going to happen. But of course, I don't normally ask strange men to dress me, and I cannot predict the future. There is a lot of me in Haruka and vice versa. In fact, Matt would very painfully point out in certain scenes, especially in volume one as we were going along, well, look, that, that's just like you. <laughs> um, she's actually, up until this point, I, the only character that I felt any kind of similarity to was Hyatt, believe it or not. <laughs> so this is the first time that I've actually had a character that I can really connect with. And for that, there's a lot of me that I put myself I kind of put myself into the character, um, and I hope that that kind of goes to She's not quite as retarded as I am, but almost. I guess um, a lot more than I'd like to admit, since he's 17, uh, and I should be a bit past some of that. But he, um, I think there's some of you in every character you play in every medium, if it's voice or stage or whatever. But there's a lot more of me in him than there has been in probably most of the other characters I've played. The relationship between Ayato and Haruka is such delicate territory because here you have this 29-year-old woman that and hopefully you're watching this after you've watched the episodes. This 29-year-old woman that is desperately in love with this 17-year-old this boy, um, having these, these memories and these emotions and these feelings that she can remember and completely comprehend and he can't. So it's like constantly having that unrequited love that, you know, there's that crush that you've had, but it's been, you know, 20 years now and you still have that same crush and just feeling that torment inside. And, and as an actor, especially, it's been a lot of fun and very challenging at the same time to try and convey that through the character without making her sound like some phony little whiny girl. Oh, I love him. And also since she's so much older and he's so much younger, you have to play it very delicately, otherwise she just comes across as a pervert, and that's totally not what it is. Uh, well, it has a special place for me. Um, I guess not unlike the relationship that the two lead characters had in Gasaraki, since uh, Monica Rial is voicing Haruka, um, and we have a long history together as friends. We've known each other for 10 years, and we've been really close so it's it's very easy to feel um, what I feel confused about the relationship to be honest with you because I don't know a whole lot yet but in the moments where we are connecting in the show uh, it's very simple to just lock on to that feeling well um, I don't believe it's clearly defined yet um, She's, Kwan is making advances uh, toward Ayato and some, she's befriending him, but we don't know yet if she's his friend or perhaps his enemy or uh, someone else. So it'll be interesting as the series progresses to see uh, what's going to happen. As I think that the, the series is sort of based around, um, it's, it's definitely uh, driven by character relationships, and I think that... Um, Everything is centering around the central character, Ayato's 
relationship with everyone that um, everybody's meeting IATO and uh, it's all centered around um, what is their what is everyone's relationship to him as far as Quan goes I think that um, we should just watch further <laughs> see what happens Um, no, I'm not certain of what happens in the next volume, um, what exactly happens in the next volume, um, although I probably shouldn't say it, I know what happens in the end, <laughs> so I, but not, not completely. I still feel there is a, there is a little bit of mystery, um, there's still mystery left to it, so. I'm not quite sure what happens in the next volume. Chris Patton and I, when we went to a convention not too long ago, we bought the Razapan Bible, which has all these really cool pictures telling you like what's going to happen in the next episode, but it's in Japanese, and I don't speak Japanese. Despite what you may read on the net, I don't speak Japanese. I've never been to Japan, but it basically has all these cool little pictures, so I've seen pictures I kind of know what's going to happen, but not quite. Like, I can't piece them together. I know what I hope happens, but we'll see. No. <laughs> Matt won't tell me anything. Well, I expect that within the next few volumes that we'll be finding out a little more um, bit by bit of who this mysterious character Quan is and what what does she mean um, what uh, how exactly did she get outside Tokyo Jupiter you know a lot of that um, that's a great thing about the series that um, it's it's so matrix ish um, you don't know that's that y you're hanging I'm hanging on it. Um, uh, it'll be fascinating to find out. I'm excited about what Quan will reveal. My expectations for Haruka, I, I just hope that, that the whole uh, Haruka and Ayato thing kind of swings in her favor. Um, it's so brutal for her and, and to watch her torment like that. As far as the series goes, I've been so impressed with the series thus far. There's so many little hints that are dropped along the way. I'm just hoping that, I mean, I'm sure it will be, that it all comes together in one big package. And, well, I hope that Haruka, like, beats all the bad Mulian guys and, you know, lives happily ever after with Ayato. But, of course, it's anime, so I've got a 50-50% chance. Wow, I hope it's going in a positive place, but I don't see that right now. Um, it's so hard to tell with, with a show that's this complex. Um, for my character, I, I think he's got a really long journey to take. And I guess I, I would kind of hope that he comes uh, full circle, maybe back to some sort of a place of peace. Uh, but I don't know. I've heard so many little rumors and hints dropped to me about how the show goes, and I refuse to read too far ahead. Uh, on any information I can get. So, but I have high hopes <laughs> that everything turns out well.